Welcome back. The topic, if you weren't here yesterday for the holiday, is my favorite topic, or at least tied for first, undoubtedly, and that is the power of prayer. And we could talk about prayer for lifetimes and lifetimes. We probably will. And it's our uh, greatest spiritual faculty, this capacity to use our own consciousness to shape and mold reality into that which we shall shape it into. And each and every one of us is obviously shaping it into something. So one way to look at prayer is look at your life such as it is, where you are, what you have, what you're doing, who you're doing it with, how you feel about it, what your state of affairs is, what your mental and emotional response and reaction, what your very experience is, and there is your prayer. Isn't that an interesting way to look at it? It's like you want to know what your long-term chronic ongoing prayer has been. I use the word chronic not in a negative sense, but in the sense of something consistent and ongoing. If you want to look at the quality of your prayer, look at your life. And if we look at our lives, I'm sure we'll see um, an extraordinary endless amount to be grateful for and also the parts that are um, sticking in our craw, uh, pebbles in our shoe, so to speak. And this is what we're talking about this week is that these challenges that seem to come to us, they let's let's simply just accept the fact that in in this plane of existence, challenges are going to be endless. I've never heard a sane person prayer, God, please remove challenges from my life. I've not heard that. And from another aspect, simply from an evolutionary aspect, if we look at every organism that has ever lived on this earth, on this beautiful blue marble spinning through space, all the life that's appeared here has been, it's been a constant challenge, a constant struggle from the first life, the first one-celled amoebas, and think of all of our ancestors, the furry little creatures, and the dinosaurs didn't have it that easy, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera as we come up with the so-called ascent of man, but it's been a constant challenge. And so why this, why God, this constant challenge? Well, it seems to go hand in hand with constant growth, constant um, progression, constant evolution. And so these seemingly ongoing challenges that we face. Now, how does prayer come into this? Well, perhaps we can begin to pray to begin to see our challenges as opportunities, as play, as exciting opportunities for growth, as interesting and fascinating conundrums and puzzles to sort out. Thomas Edison went through a thousand different forms of filament before he settled and finally discovered the light bulb, which we're all enjoying today, but it didn't come on the, yeah, you know what? I just found the perfect thing right off the bat. So I was listening to Eckhart Tolle. He's been very comforting and soothing for me and my current challenge. And I really do cycle through spiritual teachers. Sometimes I need this message and sometimes I need this message, but he was talking about, you know, I wouldn't characterize Eckhart Tolle as a Christian spiritualist, but he's constantly um, quoting Jesus, which I, of course, appreciates. But he said, Jesus said that I've come to give you the fullness of life. And the fullness of life means right here, right now. And so today's topic is the practice of praying not to ask for more stuff, but to receive this great fullness of life. And as we can sit in the middle of any external circumstance, no matter what's going on, no matter if the boat's going down or the plane's going in or the the catastrophe seems to be unfolding to simply withdraw away from that, go inside and find that unshakable ground of being that is immovable. In other words, the fullness of life is right here, right now, no matter what, and no amount of external rearrangement of things is going to give us that fullness of life. If we can't find the fullness of life, 
that perfect peace and presence right here, right now. It's not going to show up in the future as the result of the rearrangements of a couple of deck chairs on the Titanic. I cannot be reminded of this enough, and so I won't remind it enough because I think it's the greatest prayer. It's the, it's the prayer of receipt. And of course, it's wonderful to ask, but when we pray and simply receive, we're in receipt of the thing most wanted. We don't even have to ask anymore. We bring ourselves into perfect alignment and allowance of all that we have asked for that's all lined up, that's all perfectly manifest, that's ready to come in. And it's a beautiful prayer. Thank you, God, for this fullness of, of being right here. And I know you have it all lined up for me. I will rest in perfect peace. I will turn my fear into faith my anxiety into trust, and my worry into surrender. Anyway, that's my little message. I hope it made a little sense. I wish you all the most beautiful day. And pray wisely, pray ceaselessly. I'll see you tomorrow.